Now we have v equals square root 2gl, 1 minus cosine theta. Now we have to remember, what is this the velocity of? This is the velocity after the ball is embedded in the block and the two travel up together. So when we back up, it's still, this is the velocity of the block and the ball. So I'm going to put BB, the combined block and ball. So we're going to take this and go back before the collision. We're going to kind of undo momentum, um, if you will, or do the momentum problem backwards, have an explosion as opposed to a collision. So I'm going to get rid of some of my equations up top because I can't. So in this case during the collision, we have um, our momentum formula, which starts out as momentum before is equal to momentum after the collision. And before the collision, we have just the mass of the, we should call that mass one, suppose that mi. Mass one of the ball only, and we'll say velocity one, plus the block is at rest. It's got no velocity. And then after the two combine, M1 plus M2, so they're like one unit, and they're going the final velocity, which we found down here, which is V sub BB. So as they combine, we found that as they start to swing up the pendulum, they have a combined velocity of this square root of 2 GL, 1 minus cos theta. So we can substitute that in up here. This goes to zero. So we're really trying to figure out what's the velocity that the ball left the cannon at. And that's the whole point of this ballistic pendulum. It's, you've heard of ballistics and finding out about uh, bullets and how they travel and the speeds. This is kind of along the same lines. So my V1, which is going to be the velocity of the bullet, is going to equal M1 plus M2 all over M1 times this right here, which is square root of 2 g l 1 minus cosine theta. And that's going to give us our final velocity. So now we've actually got an equation. We're ready to plug in numbers and see what it gives us. So now we're going to plug in our given quantities and solve for v1 and see what speed the launcher shot the bullet out at. So V1 is going to be, M1 is the mass of the ball, which was recorded at 7.5 grams, or 0 0.0075 kilograms. Plus, the mass of the block was 80 grams, all over 0 0.0075 grams, times the square root of 2, times 9.8, is what we use for gravity. The L is the length of the pendulum, and that was where the angle was measured. It's to the top corner of the pendulum, so basically the length of the strings, which were 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. And then that's going to be times 1 minus cosine of, on average, we had 22 degrees. And I'm going to plug this into my calculator. And voila. I did it behind the scenes. V1 is 6.233 meters per second. Now, that many decimal places from the um, data we gathered is way too accurate. Um, the angle that we found, 22 degrees, was an average, and it did vary between about 21 and 23 degrees. So plus or minus one degree ends up making this number a little too precise to say that. I'm going to say it's really, I feel confident saying 6.2, and that is still pushing it a little bit. But we'll go with 6.2 meters per second for our velocity as calculated by the ballistic pendulum. Now there's another way to calculate velocity, and we're going to do that next. Now we load the ballistic pendulum again, only this time we remove the pendulum block, allowing the ball to fly freely and land on the floor. The ball starts at a height of approximately 86 and a half centimeters above the floor and will then travel sideways with the same initial velocity as before. How far is it going to land?
Here's the horizontal launch. It's kind of hard to see, so we'll do it again, only with a marker. After several launches like this one, we find that the ball travels an average of 2.6 meters away from the launch position. Here's the shot again from another angle. It took several tries to get an accurate measurement. I found it was about 2.6 meters plus or minus about 5 centimeters. Um, it wasn't perfect every single time. And what we did is we shot the ball off of a cliff, if you will, it was off the table and allowed it to fall to the ground. Now if you remember from your kinematics, everything falls the same, so delta x in the y direction, its falling distance is going to be equal to its original velocity in the y direction times the time it fell, plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times the time it fell squared. So classic kinematics equation for displacement. So we're going to rearrange this equation and solve for t. So bring my one half over and I have 2 delta x in the y direction all over a sub y. And we know what a sub y is. That's going to be the acceleration due to gravity, little g. Take the square root of that and that will give us t. So we substitute into the variables that we measured, we, uh, or I measured the uh, height at which the gun was launched from, and that was 86.5 centimeters off the floor. So it's going to be 2 times 0.865 meters, all over 9.8 meters per second. Take the square root, and that gives us the time, which I've done already on the calculator, and it is 0.42 seconds, give or take. Now, we do this one more time, delta x in the x direction equals v naught x t plus one half a sub x t squared. And we notice that there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. That goes to zero. So we have just a um, straightforward velocity times time is a so distance. We measure the distance how far it was to where it landed, which was 2.6 meters. And we know the time was 0.42 seconds, so we can divide that over, over 0.42. Should give us our original v naught in the x direction, which on the calculator, that comes out to be 6.19 meters per second. If we round that off for significant figures, I feel comfortable saying about 6.2 meters per second, which checks out with what the ballistic pendulum told us. So, two different ways to get to the same answer, and luckily for me, it all worked out. Hope you learned something and had a good time. Tune in again next time for Holloway Help.